What's up guys, Nijda from St. Vincent. So we took a field trip today. We're here in Fullerton. If you can see the sign above me, Happy Jewelers. So why are we here? Well, we're here because Happy Jewelers started in our building and they still have a space now in our building. So we thought we'd come down here, check out their space, see what they do here and kind of talk about their history. So let's go. The man, the myth, the legend. How are you? How are you? Good, good to good, see good. you. Good to see you too. So Hello. we're here at uh, Happy Jewelers and uh, it's Danny, our, our buddy here. Nice to meet you. Um, so, or, or nice we, to see you guys. Nice yeah. to meet the... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I, you know, I've been here once before. Obviously, yes. there was a, a DDE event here several years back. We yeah. talked about this we off did. camera. We did. A little bit of a crazy time. It was. A lot of people. We had, a lot, yeah. I think we had like six or 7,000 people that showed up to the event. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. It was and fun. We, yeah, my son and I were one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh my God, how is this guy handling all this? There was so much going on in the store. You had like security, you had the DJ out here, a lot of people. Yeah. So I've been here once before, obviously, and it's great setup. I walked in for about 10 minutes and I walked out, but I know you guys have a lot going on in the back. Yes. So I figured we should start by you just giving us a tour of what you do here, how many employees you have, what do you do in the back, kind of get that, and then we can talk a little bit more details about your connection to St. Vincent. Yeah, afterwards. for sure. Let's do it. I'll take you guys on the back. So I get to go in the back here. Yes. Nobody else can go. So we have a full operation here. Okay. We have literally from setters, jewelers, factory, watchmakers. It's a whole nother world back there. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, there's setters. so many people here. <laughs> yeah, there's action. Literally at all yeah, At every corner, yeah. At every corner. I mean, we have these setters, jewelers. This is Mauricio, this is one of our master jewelers. The guy can literally do anything and everything you want. Wow, and you can see what's going on right on the, on the camera yeah. right there. Video. So sometimes, you know, we have a lot of clients that actually want to see the process of how the piece is made or they want to see their diamond set or they want to see like the inscription of the diamond uh -huh. or anything like that. So Mauricio is great in that sense where he can actually set the piece in front of the client, show them the serial numbers, the inscription, and anything essentially they want to see. Here we have a full-on laser machine. Okay. So anything you want. You want a picture of your face on your piece, you want it on your watch, you want a company logo, anything like that, it can be done here. So they give you the electronic version of the file and then you can recreate exactly. it here. Exactly. Okay, yep. awesome. Okay. Over here we have our uh, watch polishing machine. So this is literally like, you want your Rolex polish, you want your paddock polish, anything like that, we do it all in-house. So we actually ordered this machinery from Europe and it's a full full service. I think I saw something like this when I was at JCK. They, yes. have, they have stuff like this, they display for people like yourself to go there and take a look at it and then buy it. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. So it's pretty awesome. Our jewelers and more setters room, right? So we have literally jewelers on staff that any repair, anything you want, we can have it done. And we have a lot of them, I mean, as you can see. I can imagine, yeah. That. And when we actually built this, you know, when we first expanded the store, this was supposed to be an office area. But one day we were eating at Din Tai Fung, the restaurant, oh, yeah. and my kids were watching the guys, literally, I swear to you, the store was built, plans and everything. My kids were watching the guy making the dumplings, and they were so entertained because, you know, it's a 45 minutes to an hour away. I said, I was like, I have that. I was like, I want that. Literally, the next day, I called my contractor. I said, break everything out. I said, I want this to be see-through. So you can see over here. Yeah, yeah, so you can see everything, yeah. Customers can actually see their pieces being worked on and everything from the showroom. So nice. it's actually really cool. Yeah, so I'm, I've seen a lot of this, obviously, in our building. We have so many diamond setters, and yeah, it's awesome. Like I said, it's the second oldest trade in the world. I'm not gonna tell you what the first one is, but I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I didn't know that was the second oldest trade it's in the, the world. It's the second oldest trade. Is Absolutely. it really? Yeah. So over here, we have polishing. We literally, we could do watches here. We could do jewelry, labbing machine, rhodium. As you can see, like er everything is in-house. We, we do it all. Look at that, there's that the steaming machine, right? This is the steaming machine. Yeah. And then we have our watchmaker here. You know, finding a watchmaker that actually knows what they're doing, that's actually able to work on complicated watches, mm -hmm. is probably one of the most difficult traits to find because they're non-existent. They don't exist anymore. Jackie, I'll never forget the one of the first days he came, we actually took him from a really uh, famous store in Vegas and we brought him over, we had hunted him over here and moved okay. him here. I had a really complicated paddock Philippe that I was selling. The watch wasn't working. The only way to fix it, I had to send it to Paddock. It was gonna take like six, seven months and I already had purchased the watch for a quarter million dollars. I said, Jackie, I said, you think you could work on this? You know, I was a little nervous, this and that. He goes, yeah, give it to me. Literally in one hour, fix it. I said, wow. I said, this was one of the best hires I ever did. Saved me a quarter million dollars in cash flow because the money was out yeah, already. Well, yeah. I was selling the watch and it was probably a twenty to $25,000 repair at Paddock if I had to send it out in six months. Wow. Yeah. Good job there, my friend. Thank you. You're the pro. Yeah. 
Jackie's number one. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's good. It's hard to find good people. When you do, you want to hold on to them as, oh, as yeah. long as you can. Of course. I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. So we have more offices here. Tina, the staff over here, Hello. controls all the orders, makes sure everything is done. You know, we have offices overseas as well, so they're always talking to them. They're talking to our LA office, which is obviously our manufacturing and savings and building, making sure everything is done on time, making sure the setters have all their diamonds. It looks like organized confusion here, but she knows everything that's oh, going on. Yes. I guarantee Monday. you. Yeah. Today's Monday. <laughs> this is Monday. Huh? We have Everybody a really knows. crazy inventory system, where it's literally, um, like, let's say this piece, right? If this piece went to, um, 10 different hands. Uh -huh. I know exactly what day it left a certain person's hand, what time, what second, how many stones there were. It's all literally on a log and it's all scanned. Got it. So you can track it at any time. I can time. track it at any time. So if someone says, hey, I want to make a change, you can go and say, okay, it's in this department. Let me grab it and do yes. the change. And that one we needed because we have so many orders going on that the only way we can do it is literally yeah, yeah, to by do having a very like, of course, complex of course. system. Now we have even more here too. As you guys know, the back end is probably one of the most important things of any company, yep. right? So over here we have, you know, our diamond inventory, jewelry inventory, shipping, watch inventory, customer service, website. They handle phone calls that come into everything. 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 And then they relay it to whoever it needs yes. to go to. Phone calls, orders. I mean, this is packages. I mean, as it's early, right? It's 10 in the morning. At about four o'clock, this will probably be this whole wall right here, and there'll probably be like, what, you know, like 40, 50 packages going out? Yeah, so I've seen that in our building. Our UPS guy just stands outside by the truck at four, and people are just lined up like it, like it's like it's in and out. Yeah. They're lined up, they're just <laughs> handing him packages. So, yeah. yeah, and then we have, this is Janice. This is where, if you want to get paid from Happy Jewelers, you come to Janice. <laughs> okay. Janice controls the money. Don't come to me for money, okay? Don't ask me for money. You call Janice. Okay, I'll be visiting you in a little while. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have more offices here. And then this is uh, pictures of my dad from our first factory in Turkey. Yeah. So we actually had uh, images and a client of ours came in and he's like, hey, I really want to take these images and I want to draw them. So he actually, these are oh. all pencil. So they took this as, and then they made the yeah. rendering. Oh my God, that's so nice. Cool, huh? Very nice. This is really the story we always talk about with St. Vincent is that we say family first, yep. right? The money comes, the jewelry's there, the cars are there, yes. all that. But the family is the most important. Your family's number one. Because that's the thing that kind of your base is, 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 is gone on. And you, everything above that is just icing. Yeah, of course. And I mean, as you know, that's where my dad's factory is. My, you know, when my dad first came to the United States, he actually opened up his factory at St. Vincent. I know. And still till today, it's still there. We still operate it. And, you know, that's where we originated from. You know, before we even had Happy Jewelers, it was our factory first yep. at St. Vincent, where that's the first day First, when my dad came here and opened up his business, he actually opened up in the St. Vincent. I mean, St. Vincent is probably, is it the oldest jewelry? Well, yeah, it's been the there. We've been there 41 years this year. Yeah. So the jewelry district started in 1972. There's other, other buildings, but our jewelry building is, we always say it's the second largest jewelry center in the country, but it's actually the first because New York, uh, the buildings are not owned by, by the same company. They're individually. So yeah. New York is bigger, but we are the largest jewelry center in the largest, country. Right? Yeah, almost 500 tenants. And I remember I used to see your dad all the time. Yeah, I know. God yeah. rest his soul. Yeah, God rest his soul. Yeah. yeah. Let's have a seat. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk. I'll bring, let's, my, I'll bring yeah. my brother in too. He okay. knows. He, he loves talking about the history and stuff like that of happening. Okay. Sounds good. Have a seat. So now I want to get the backstory from, from all the way in the beginning, from the old days until now. Yeah. Tell me how all this evolved. So my dad started the business back in Istanbul, Turkey. Mm -hmm. In 1973, that's when he opened up his first shop. Before that, I don't know, do you want to get into like really deep where he- Sure. You know, he, yeah, he was, you know, he grew up, he was a villager in the yeah. village okay. uh, in Turkey. At the age of 13 years old, you know, he was the oldest son out of the family. Okay. So he migrated to the big city with big dreams and big hopes to Istanbul. And uh, he landed a job at a jewelry store at the age of 13, living with his like cousin that was 16 when, you know, in the big city, just by himself, took the bus, you know, landed wow. a job. 13 years old. 13 years old, imagine, dude. I mean, I have a 13 year old daughter and a 16 year old daughter. I'm like, man, it's like, they, <laughs> they like, they go somewhere, we're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. like, we, You're we, like following yeah, them exactly. on top. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Back then, it was just, that was it. He lands a job at a jewelry, uh, factory you know he was like the guy that swept the floors made teas and coffees yeah, yeah. and then uh he like what he was watching these guys make chains like you know while bringing him lunch go run go do the siren 
uh, he just like learned by just looking. And then okay. one day he sat on the bench with his uh, owner, with the owner of the business. He started making j chains and he got in the business. And uh, he started bringing a lot of his cousins and brothers from the village to the big city. And uh, as time has passed, he opened up his own place at the age of uh, 18 years old. Okay. Yeah, they had a really successful business in uh, Istanbul, Turkey. He brought his family, like, he, and then we migrated from Istanbul to uh, uh, downtown, like Los Angeles, not downtown LA, but Los Angeles in 1994. 94, okay. Yeah. So earlier I was telling you that, I mean, St. Vincent was the first place. That yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was like my dad, yeah. That was the first that was place like, that he. Uh, before he even had the jewelers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he still has that. I know, I go, I'm on, on the second floor, I see there's the, the office you have, and then downstairs there's yes. the. Yeah, and uh, you guys been, St. Vincent has been. Uh, part of the legacy and uh, part of the history. Yeah. My dad has been a tenant there and he still is like, God rest his soul. Yeah. Like, you know, before he passed away, he's like, Gabe, he's like, I love the store. I love where it's at. Like never ever get rid of it. Even if I die, like it's, wow. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Baby. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah, and then do you guys go to downtown at all now? I don't see you guys as often. I uh, mean, I go like really <laughs> quick just to go see how things are. Uh, in the morning, but we have a great team there that we trust a lot, obviously. And then, how, what? When did you open this location? So, and then, um, my dad was in the wholesale business, you know, supplying mountings to everybody in LA, of course, the whole country. Like he was selling mountings, and then uh, I, I was, I was helping him, and I was helping my uncles in uh, Orange County, Fullerton. But I like Orange County, Fullerton, better as like, you know, having my own store, dealing with the public, you know? So I opened up Happy Jewelers in 2000. 2000, okay. Yeah, but I was working for my uncles and my dad since I got here, since 94. So I had I had the knowledge of wholesale and retail. So I, we, I put both together and opened up Happy Jewelers. And then you've been here ever since this location? Ever since, yeah. And you guys expanded a while back, right? We did. Yeah, mean, we, we did. We were in the Fullerton Jewelry Mart. Um, and then when COVID hit, we're like, no, we need a little bit more space because we're always a busy store, you know? So with the regulations and everything, we ended up opening up this store, which was, what, 1,500 square feet? Yeah, uh, 2,000. 2,000 square feet. Yeah. And then a year and a half ago, we took over the, the building next door. Yeah. So now we're close to like 37, 3,800 square feet. And um, God willing, if we're able to, we're going to take over the, the place next door. Oh, well. the one next yeah. door too. Yeah. So yeah, so that's the, that's the other part. Like we've always talked about St. Vincent and family, and this is a very, very good example of it, right? So they, they started in Turkey. They came to the United States with a dream to do well. Uh, their, their father wanted to do better for themselves and for their family. They came to St. Vincent. They started there. These guys opened their place in Fullerton, and now we're talking about 14 years later, 24 years later. 24 oh years my later. God, 24 years later. <laughs> wow. We're getting old. I'm like 14, I'm like, no, 24 years later. <laughs> and now the, the, the success that they're having, I mean, you yeah. see them all over YouTube, they're all over Instagram, they're dealing with, you know, DDE, they have uh, producer Michael comes here, they have other things that they're doing. They're into watches, they're into jewelry. So it's really important if you have a dream that you want to do well, you have to follow that dream. Uh, there's gonna be roadblocks, but you have to get there. So I wanted to make sure that we came here and we, 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 we showed what they did for themselves and how they started at St. Vincent so that everyone can see that, like I said, if you have a goal, you can make it happen. So now what we're gonna do is, I think we're gonna go and check out some of your inventory. I yeah. wanna see what you guys have. But before we do that, I don't know if you saw the video, but I recently purchased my first Rolex. Uh -huh. Which yeah, is this one here. That looks good. Oh, right. I love the Mel Gauss. I love it. Voila. All right. So this is the one I picked. And I think this is the best fit for me for my first watch. So there was some discussion about which one I should get. And I, and I had mentioned in the videos about the, there was a Submariner. And then there was the Sky Dweller. And then I, I, I asked people what they thought. And they did. this was a unique piece. So I decided, you know what? And this is literally like no joking around. This is my first Rolex. Yeah. Like I was never into watches. I had a small watch collection, but very simple. And I love this watch and I've seen people like, kind of like, hey, why is that green, the tint? Yeah. Mean, so kind of you explain yeah. it to them. So what do you think about this particular model? I love it. Model? I mean, it's a discontinued Milgauss, green crystal, blue dowel. It's the, in the collection of the Milgauss, it's probably the toughest one. The rarest one. But in the collection of Rolex history, it's a pretty wild piece because actually movement wise, it's probably one of the most complicated movements they make, but also, it's very loud for Rolex, right? It's very different. Yeah, They never true. did anything 
like that. So historically, I mean, the watch is going to go down as one of the probably one of the most collectibles. Yeah. Oh, great. So I picked so the right choice. one. Picked the right okay, one. good, good. Yeah. Okay. Because Rolex has never done. They, Rolex is very simple. Don't forget, they won't go like. Yeah, they, they don't won't go do anything yeah. crazy. So for them to do a green crystal on a watch like that with the blue dial, it's not common. Yeah, so and, cool. and, and you know they know what's they know their business, so that's what they stick to, which is great. Obviously, yep. there's other watchmakers that we'll see that you guys have that do a little bit more exotic stuff but yeah i think rolex just kind of sticks to what they know okay so let's go check out what you have and then we'll show them some like you know entry level watches that you can buy at happy jewelers tutors and stuff yeah and we'll show you some uh higher end stuff yeah yeah Whatever see some want. pieces yeah, yeah yeah yeah. so now we're gonna look at some pieces yes so we want to see some stuff that's just regular stuff that you normally sell and then maybe some special items that you yeah don't have out here so so we have all kinds i mean like we have all price points you want to watch for two thousand dollars three thousand dollars or you want to watch for a million dollars i have, have it all okay and i have it in stock okay you know what i mean so it's like you know you want a, a 36 millimeter day chest with diamond bezel diamond dial we have it this is a black mother of pearl you want it with an oyster brace of plain we have a white roman dial you want a 26 millimeter steel and rose in stock, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we literally have it all. You want a two-tone 36 blue dial in stock. If you're like, you know what, Danny, I want something a little bit crazier. The Master 40 millimeter factory. This, this, is is this is beautiful. You like that, huh? Yeah. He didn't speak until I pulled this one out. I, I did. The minute I pulled this one out, his eyes opened up. He's like, wow. oh my God. So I like the, <laughs> I like the uh, kind of rubber. Uh, I'm like you. I like rubber strap too. Yeah, I the really, flex. be careful about what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> And then obviously the diamonds. Yes. Wow, look at that. That thing shines beautifully. Pretty. And like, look, it's it's casual at the same time, uh, a little Dressing. bit upscale. Yeah. Exactly. This is really nice. Yeah. So yeah. This is this actually one. the plain version of it. Yeah. With no diamonds. This is also very nice. And this is rose gold. Rose gold. This one's beautiful too. Cool, huh? Look at that. APs. If you're an AP guy. Yeah. You know, I tried on a couple of APs before, and I was thinking about these. I like the, the fact that it's round, but it's also square. Yes. I'm a square kind of guy. I like square cars. I like square shapes. I'm not a, but this is a combination of both. Yeah. This is really, really nice. And these are actually reasonably priced. They're not, not bad, like mid thirties. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. a, you know, an arm and a leg. Okay. No. Cool. Okay. I mean, we have like white gold subs. Does this have a nickname? This is the Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Cookie! This yeah. is the yellow gold version of it. And again, I learned something. So this is actually gold. This is gold. Yeah. So I learned that. I said, they said, if anything's yellow on a Rolex, it's real oh, gold. Of course. Yeah. And yeah, I, didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if that. If it's not, if you see a Rolex that's yellow, that's plated, it ain't real. Man, this is heavy. It's heavy. Okay. It's heavy. Okay. This is I mean, nice. Here, okay. There's Starbucks, Sprite, Batgirl. I love these nicknames. I'm learning something new every day. I've, I've, the Batgirl, I think I saw. Starbucks? Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I got the combination. You okay. want to see a Batman? So look, I have four watches here. These all have nicknames. We went over these ones. I want to see if you actually know the nicknames of these. Yeah, right? I didn't know there was going to be a test. Uh huh. I didn't study. That's the fun part of it. Did you study as a kid? No. Even better. Did oh. you do well in school? No. Okay, then we're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> we're definitely in trouble. I did better than Alex. I stayed in school. Yeah. <laughs> I never went to school. I literally used to drive in. All my friends were younger than me because all my real friends had graduated the year before. I used to drive in with them. I had no license. I dropped them off, sit in their car, wave bye to the security guard, and leave. <laughs> but I didn't study very well. Okay, so now you're telling me that there's a nickname for this. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna give you a couple hints. I'm gonna need all the help I can get. It's based on an alcoholic beverage and it's based on a beer, a very dark beer. Okay, this is the Guinness. Wow. Good job. Good job. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. He seems a little disappointed though. I think yeah. he thinks I gave it away a little bit. <laughs> this is a 40 millimeter non ceramic submariner. Does that have anything to do with the nickname? No. You just, you just tell me more information. Okay. So this has a nickname. Yes. Starbucks. No, that was a trick, you see? I tricked them. The newer one is a Starbucks. The older one is not. So this used to be, this is a, the new one is a Starbucks of this one. Yes, which but is this, this one. Okay, but this is not so a Starbucks. So this is a Starbucks. Okay, this is coffee bean. No, that's pretty good. But that'd be, have to be brown for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pete's coffee. No. It has nothing to do with coffee. It has nothing to do with coffee. Should I give him a little hint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. give okay. me one more hint. So it has something to do with the cartoon character. Oh, Kermit. Yes. Kermit the job. Frog. Okay. <laughs> okay, I like that one. Okay. Oh, this is the one that Vic was wearing the other day. Okay, Kermit. Okay, got it. Okay. So right here we have a Rolex GMT, blue bezel going into red on the bottom, Jubilee bracelet, black dial. 
This is out of the sports models. Aside from the Daytona, probably holds the most value and it will always resell for the most. Okay, Pepsi. Wow. You know what? I swear to God, I, it's kind of a guess, but it kind of wasn't. <laughs> okay, I'm for three for three. If I get this one, I get to take that watch home, I Done. think. Okay. All right, don't give him any hints for this one. <laughs> okay. Rolex, GMT, steel and rose gold. Brown bezel going into black. Okay, do you know what this is? I know. You do? I do. You're supposed to prep me for this stuff, bro. <laughs> I'm doing, I, I, there's, a, there's a watch on the line here. It has something, you have one guess. Or no, we'll give him two guesses. It has something to do with the soft drink. Oh, oh, root beer. Nah, I guess not. Is it, is it root beer? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> what is going on here? This is what I won. Look, I that get was to take nice. this home. Not really. That was nice. I should have known this one. What's because this one? That's Batman. What's the difference between the Batman and the background? One's a woman, one's a... No, oh. there's actually a difference. Is it visual? Can yeah. I see the difference? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Well, now not. you gave it away. No, not really. I don't have my glasses on, so everything looks blurry. Uh, they look the same. Yeah. Oh, the band. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't have my glasses yeah. on. <laughs> this really. one right here. There's a nickname for this? Yes. Okay, is this an oyster band? This is an oyster band. This is black Can and I show gray. The camera? Black and gray. Okay, give me one hint, just one. It's based on a superhero. Superhero that wears black and gray. But it's the person that plays its name. Like it's in the movie, the okay. guy's a superhero, right? Okay. But it's the it's the actor's name, right? So he plays a superhero, which is a certain name, which we went over. Okay. Right? Okay. But it's the character's name before he becomes that superhero. Clark Kent? No. It's close. Arch Nemesis. It's close. Lex Luthor? No. That's his Arch Nemesis. No, no, yeah. not his like his competition. There's a versus, there's a versus movie for it. Oh, there is? Yeah. Superman versus B Batman? But what's his name? Oh, um, oh, come on. I'm not a Batman <laughs> guy. Uh, oh, Bruce Wayne. Yes, uh, yeah. There you uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> My brain still works. <laughs> now, okay. are you guys ready for some crazy pieces? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so I think the heavy hitters have showed up. The heavy hitters Because they're covered. Yes. And I'm sure there's some fantastic stuff in there, and yes. I'm looking forward to seeing them. I'm assuming these things don't have nicknames? No. Okay. You're okay. They're just watches. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yes. No more tests. Please. Here at Happy Jewelers, if you want to buy something for $500, you can buy something for $500. You want to spend one, 1.2, 1.3 million, we have, we have it. Got it. It's going to be one of the only places in the world that you can go to, buy a $500 watch, sell me a half a million dollar watch, or buy a million dollar watch. Got it. We have it all from all brands, right? I mean, we have high-end Rolexes, high-end Paddocks, I and mean, this is the 5711 green dial, okay? Extremely rare. They make it in the white dial, they make it in a blue dial, the green dial goes for double what both of those go for. Because of the rarity. Because of the rarity. Paddock 5270P, platinum. Now this is a grand complication, right? It's a perpetual calendar in platinum, but this is not a normal one. This is a Tiffany & Company. Paddock 5270. So that was like a collaboration? This is a collaboration. This is a Jules Audemars, AP, Turbion, all factory diamonds. All real? All real. Brand new. What do you think the retail is on this? Uh, I'd say half a mil? Yeah, close. 600K. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, these are all guesses. And I okay. have three of them. Okay, you have three One, of them. One, two, three. Oh, and all different? Uh... All different um, combinations. This one's going to be White gold with the blue Evan Turin dial. This one is um, white gold with all factory diamonds on the inside diamonds, and this is rose gold. But look, over here, these retail for about $600,000. They're all brand new. I have them each for a quarter million dollars. Oh, wow. Yeah, like this one's a quarter million. This is 700K retail. This is about $300,000. And then this one is gonna be in the 250 range. And this one? This one is about 180. 180. Yeah. It's interesting how, I remember I was telling you about the bands. Yes. I like, I kind of like leather bands. It's not, it doesn't necessarily, and here's some very expensive good watches that have the leather band. So it doesn't always have to be a. Well, leather band is always like, you know, it's dressier, right? It's more of like a suit wear, bracelets a little bit more casual. Yeah. So, so obviously I'm from the Middle East, just like you are. Mm -hmm. And I remember my dad, when he had really nice watches, most of them had the leather band. Yes. Especially in the Middle yep. East. Yep. And especially now too. A lot of them will have leather bands or rubber. Okay. okay. Look now. Check this piece out. This is a cool piece. So it's not going to be like crazy expensive. Well, it is expensive actually for what it is, but this is a piece of history, okay? This is an AP Royal Oak. 
but this is the original Royal Oak that Jarrell Gents had designed. First series that AP ever came out with, right? Don't forget, the Royal Oak brought them back in business. If it wasn't for the Royal Oak, we wouldn't even know where AP would be really? today. Wow. So Jarrell okay. Genta, who is the same person that actually designed the Nautilus as well. The guy that designed the Nautilus, Jarrell Genta, also designed the Royal Oak. This is the actual A series. So this is actually the first Royal Oak that was ever made, like actual vintage. So what does this go for? This one is about 105. Yeah. But look at the dial of it. Oh yeah. Look at the dial, it's all rusted. So like these watches, if they actually came in with no rust in the dial, perfect, perfect everything, you would probably buy it for less because you know something's been replaced. You actually want the imperfections in Got it. it. So this is Jocko's Dros, full platinum, brand new, with the tourbillon movement. Jocko's Dros is not gonna be a common watch that many people are gonna have in stock, right? It takes a very specific customer to come in and buy it, and it takes a very specific person to be able to buy it, to stock it. Right, this is the actual tourbillon movement on the bottom of it. Once you get it going and you run and you wind it, it'll actually start running. That's interesting because the, the watch itself, the dial is a small part of the actual exactly. watch. Exactly. Very interesting piece. Yeah, check this out. Oh, yeah. So these are the big boys. Oh, yeah. These are, yes. these are cool, yes. right? Okay. So I mean, look, you asked about a piece unique, right? The piece unique I have is actually a Richard Mill piece unique. So a piece unique is a one of one. So the, the actual watch manufacturer only made one piece. There's not a remake of it. There's nothing. They actually custom designed the piece. So it's one of one. one, of one. Yeah, okay, got it. That's okay. it. So this is a Pablo McDonough piece unique, one of one. They made it for a very famous polo player. So a lot of people, when they see this watch, they think it's an engine, right? It's like kind of like the two oh, things. okay, I see that. But this was actually made for a polo player because when they're playing polo with the ball and everything like that hidden, it's actually protecting the case and the movement of it. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah. somebody else, we went, we did a golf tournament, and somebody mentioned there that you have to be careful about what kind of watches you wear during a golf tournament because if ball hits it or the movement or something yes. else. So, okay, got it. So, so they can actually wear this as they're playing. Yes. <laughs> That's money right there. That's money. <laughs> yeah. Guess how much it says. If it's one of one, I'm saying 1.3. 1 1.1. .1. Uh, that's a center right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a center. Yeah. Check this out. This is an AP Royal Oak Offshore Concept Ladies. This is one of five, all factory. Now, please tell me you've seen a prettier watch than this. I mean, the watch is like a piece of art. It is. Literally, like when I first saw it, I bought it because I loved it. But when I actually opened the box and viewed it, it was like, I've seen many, many watches in my life, but this is one that actually took, like it kind of took my breath away a little bit. So this is all diamonds. All factory diamonds, rose nice. gold, and it's a tourbillon. Do you know what a tourbillon is? One of the most complicated movements in the world. Okay, so okay? it's the movement, that's what it's about. It's the movement, it's the actual complications of the watch. Not many watch brands can actually build tourbillon movements. You should buy that for your wife. Are you married or? I am. Yeah, your wife would love that. Well, our 25th anniversary already passed, so okay. we'll wait for the 50th. <laughs> <laughs> if we're still it's, around. It's only what, half a million maybe? Yeah, no, maybe a little less. I like give you a 420. Deal. 420. Well, look at look at the diamonds on there. The, the diamonds, rose crazy. gold, and she, your wife will be the only one that has it too. The, the problem is when she wears this, I have to have the security guard next to her. That's gonna cost you. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna guess this was gonna be more like 800,000, but 400,000. It's a yeah. deal. Well, the retail is what a million maybe. No, no, the retail is gonna be around like maybe yeah. six, seven hundred k. You wanna see another ladies? Oh watch? yeah. Oh Here. yeah. This is a ladies one of five, also Turbion Richard Mill. All factory diamonds. This one's about 600K. Is this one of, or is one this right? One, one of five. five. One of five. Oh, okay. Diamonds here too. This is beautiful. So let me ask you something. When someone comes in and they're looking for this specific watch, it's easy to do, sell it to them. But when it's someone who comes in and says, you know, I have a budget of, let's say, up to 700,000 for it. I mean, do you just immediately pull out one of these boxes and say, okay, here are all the options that you have? Or are there pieces that you kind of say, well, this... It depends. So like if someone says, hey, I have a 700K budget or up to 700K, I'm not just gonna go like max out. Because you never know, look, there's a lot of people that will come in that have five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar budget, but they'll like a watch for 50 grand, just as much as they'll like something for okay, 700K, it. right? So it might be just a look of it more than the value. Exactly. Okay, so tell me about these very yeah. colorful. So watches. like these are all gonna be the same models, right? This okay. is 6501, 6501, these are rose gold. This is 6501, all black and TPT. This is 6501 with a Tiffany blue and TPT. I think this will look good with the color of your skin. Why don't you try this on? This is probably okay. the rarest 6501 
ultimate split second chronograph movement ever made by Richard Mill. Okay, let me tell you something. This thing is so light. You don't, you can't, you won't feel it on your wrist. This, okay, Crazy. I've never put a Richard Mill on my wrist ever, but it feels like it's not even, Yeah. it's not even there. And look at how thick it is. Yeah. Richard Mill, don't forget, a lot of people think because it's big and clunky that it's going to be uncomfortable. Richard Mill is probably one of the most complicated, or sorry, one of the most comfortable watches you'll ever put on because the way they design the casing, it fits perfectly with the wrist and the weight of it. Right? He's not, he's not joking. This no. thing, if you put this on your wrist, it feels like it's not even there. It's yeah. like a paper, like a yeah. piece of paper. And it has right a rubber now. band too. It yeah. has the rubber. Okay, so I'm going to guess 750. Less. But this is gonna this is actually an interesting game. Okay? Watch. These are all the same watch. And this. Okay. This one's four hundred seventy five thousand. Okay. How much do you think the rose gold one is? Both brand new. Eight hundred thousand. No, the rose gold, so in Richard Mill, the more colorful it is, the rarer and harder it is to get, so it's gonna be more expensive. So the, so the rose gold is cheaper. Wow, I didn't think about that. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe because I thought like, you think of rose gold, you know, gold. No. So like Look, this is brand new. It's about 355000 This is pre-owned and it's a black NTPT. This one's about 345000 Right, this is 2024. This one's a 2022. You can tell a Richard Mill right away if you like kind of know watches. Not that I know that much, but you, when you look at it, okay, yeah, that one for sure is a Richard Mill. That's how you can tell. This thing is... Crazy, huh? Look at this thing, bro. I'm telling you, if you put this on your wrist, you will not even know you have a watch on. I mean, look at this one. This is an RM03. This is the third Turbion ever made in the history of Richard Mill. This watch, you buy it, in 20, 30 years, Richard Mill will probably contact you when they open up the museum to buy it to put it in. How many of these are there? It's not numbered, but okay. very few. Very few. Yeah. Okay, and I'm guessing, so, 650. This one's about uh, 285,000. Man, I'm, I'm getting worse and worse as this game goes on. <laughs> I'm thinking so high because, I, you know, when you hear Richard Mill, you just think yeah. quarter mil, half a yeah, mil. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's, That's the, the number. Richard Mill thing. Yeah. I had the RM Ferrari, the the super, super thin one that I just sold last week for about 1.4 million. And that's the Richard Mill? Yeah. So so he makes also thin watches? He makes thin watches. He made it in a collaboration with Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. let's take this one off before uh, before I... Uh... <laughs> the sick dog. Yeah. This is... Just hold this for a second. Yeah. Just hold it. Oh, wow. You feel like nothing's there. Yeah, it's so light. Crazy. You want one, don't you? I do. Oh. You know, once you wear it, you want it. Honestly. Okay, so right off the bat, when I look here. That's so you have expensive taste. <laughs> this is all factory. This is the Lord Kala. You know, Jacob and Company probably came out of his uh, for his billionaire watch after the Vacheron Lord Kala. I'm not saying that he did. That's where design, but it looks very similar. This is like, um, I think, four or five hundred k retail. Crazy piece. Like I mean, everywhere you turn, it's just shining. Yeah. I mean, look at this one too. This is a Deb Bethune. This company will probably only produce about 100 watches a year. So very rare. Very, very rare. Very complex movements. They're almost not even producing for profit. They're just literally doing it for the love of the watchmaking. Because if they were doing it for, they can't physically build more. Oh, I see. Because so of how complex their movements are and their casing. So there's a lot of labor involved in making yes. these watches. Now, when they make watches, whether it's R Rolex or anybody else, is there machines making this, or it's human beings sitting and making both, this? Both. So it's a combination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's human beings putting the watches together, but obviously it's like machinery that's like helping doing the casing, the polishing, et cetera, and everything like that. But it's human beings that are actually putting it together. And you know, imagine like watches like this, when things happen to them, not many watchmakers can actually yeah, yeah, work, can on, work on them. Yeah, I can't even imagine. That's why it's important to have a watchmaker that knows what yes. they're doing. So they can work on all different kinds exactly. of watches. Exactly. It looks like a very light watch. I'm guessing is. this is like, Canadian. I would say, quarter mil? This one is about 105. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'll keep thinking on the high side. This is a minute repeater, Piaget, quarter million retail. Minute repeater. Minute repeater. So a minute repeater is a very, very complex movement as well. Movement-wise, it's probably the most difficult movement to build. I know I said that about Turbion, but minute repeater is kind of on a different level. And then if, let's say, somebody has this watch and the band just wears from from years of You can use. order a new strap. You use a new strap, okay, got it. And you order it directly from them or you guys take care of all that? We order it directly through them as You well. do, okay, got it. So I have one more very, very special piece okay. I wanna show you, okay? Okay. It's a crazy watch. Okay, I wanna see that one. Have you ever seen a Jacob and Company Astronomia? Mm -hmm. No, not in person. Yeah. I've seen it on some videos. Well, today we're gonna pop your chair with it. Oh, <laughs> I love it. So right here we got one of the craziest Jacob and Company Astronomias. This is the roulette wheel. 
Do you like gambling? Absolutely. So I have an in-house gambler. Do you like roulette? Yes. Yeah? What's your number? We're going to gamble right now. Uh, two. Two? Is it really two? Yeah. Okay, good. My number is zero. Okay. Check this out. The guy makes probably the craziest watches ever produced in the world. I mean, this is Jacob and Company, Company Astronomia Roulette Wheel. It's an actual working roulette as well, too. You see the little ball over there? 32. Oh my God. I mean, look at the thickness of it. It's like a piece of art. Look at the box it comes in. I mean, the box, I mean, everything about it. I mean, it's, it's half a million dollars. Look at the presentation on this thing. Yeah. So you have to wind it from the bottom of it right over here. So you're going to move that. It's double. So once you get it going, you'll just see the tourbillon over there starting to run. So this is going to be actually constantly moving. Now, if you're ever in the midst of, you know, you and your buddies are arguing, you want to pick a number, you literally click this button right there, and then boom. You got number two? <laughs> I got two, yeah. I got zero. Whoever loses, or whoever wins, or whoever loses pays for dinner. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to test, I'm going to have to believe what you're saying because I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell. <laughs> Come on, two. Two. 34. Okay, we both lost. We both lost. <laughs> Buy ourselves our own dinner. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this, Crazy again, piece. how many of these are there in the world? Do you think? 88 pieces. In the whole world. In the whole world. That's a lucky number. And he's smart. I was about to say that. He's very smart for doing 88 because in the Asian culture, 88 yes, is lucky. That's a very lucky number. You want to try it on? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I bet you this is going to be heavier than the uh, Richard Mill I had. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a big boy. See? This suits you more than the Richard Mill. I agree. I agree. Right? I agree. You agree, right? Are you kidding? So, I mean, what's the big deal? It's only, it's like, I'll give you a good deal on it. Don't worry. This, you just wear this like once a year. No, you wear this every day. Every day? You go like through the tenants and you start gambling the rent money. <laughs> <laughs> if I wear this at St. Vincent, uh, I'm going to have to raise everyone's rent yeah. by 25%. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy piece. I told you guys, uh, we, we, we do a lot here as far as St. Vincent is concerned. I mean, this is, again, something that started at St. Vincent and now look at the success they have. Just look yeah. at how many people are here in the store. Of course, we're very happy for you. Thank you. We're happy for your success. Thank you. And we wish you as much luck as possible and success and health. Thank you. The health Amen. is the most important Amen. as we all know. Amen. So you guys follow them, Happy Jewelers. We're going to put their information below. Come check them out, especially if you're in Orange County. Remember, they started St. Vincent, but they've expanded. Thank you. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm, I see you guys all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm in L.A. always. So. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs>